Welcome to Lecture 8 of the Pentateuch. This lecture will cover the book of Leviticus. The author of the book of Leviticus is Moses, and the theme is the establishment of various priestly and sacrificial laws for the children of Israel. Roman numeral 1. The Lord gives laws for sacrifice and offerings. Letter A. He gives the law of the burnt sacrifices. There were three types of animals that could be brought for this sacrifice. A bull, a male lamb, or birds. Specifically, turtle doves or pigeons. Each animal was to be healthy and without blemish, which meant aesthetically pleasing. The priest would then put their hand upon the offering's head, kill the animal, sprinkle the blood on the altar by the door of the tabernacle, skin or defeather the animal, cut it into pieces, and burn it upon the altar over the wooden flames. The remnant of this offering was to be Aaron and his sons. Then letter B. He gives the law of the meat or the meal offerings. This offering was to be with fine flour and oil and frankincense added to it, and it was to be burnt upon the altar by the door of the tabernacle. The meal could be baked in an oven, on a pan, or even fried, but it had to be unleavened and without any honey. The remnant of this offering was to be for Aaron and his sons. Interestingly, this was the only sacrifice or offering that did not require an animal's death. Letter C, he gives the law of the peace offerings. For this offering, one could bring a male or female lamb or goat without blemish. The individual offering the sacrifice would lay his hands upon the head of the animal, kill it at the door of the tabernacle, and then the priest would burn the innards and sprinkle the blood upon the altar all around it. Then letter D, he gives the law of the sin offering. There were three types of offerings for this offering. Number one, if a priest or the congregation sinned, they were to sacrifice a young bull. Secondly, if a ruler sinned, then they were to sacrifice a young male goat. And thirdly, if a common person sinned, then they were to sacrifice a young female goat or lamb. They were to bring the sacrifice to the door of the tabernacle, lay their hand upon its head, and kill it. Then the priest would dip his finger in its blood and sprinkle it in front of the veil of the sanctuary, on the altar of incense, and all the rest would go on the brazen altar. If the offender could not afford the lamb or goat, then they were allowed to bring two young turtle doves or pigeons. If they were still too poor to even bring that, they could offer one-tenth of an ephah of fine flour without oil or frankincense. This offering also included sins committed in ignorance. And finally, letter E. He gives the law of the trespass offerings. This offering could also include sins of ignorance as in the sin offering, but the difference was that these sins pertain to one directly against the Lord or against others, and the offender could offer restitution. The sacrifice to be given was a ram without blemish, but the method for sacrifice is not going to be detailed until chapter 7. Then we'll find out that they are actually the same as the sin offering. Roman numeral 2. The Lord gives further guidelines for the sacrifice and offerings. Letter A. He further explains the burnt sacrifice. For this sacrifice, the priest would wear linen to start burning the sacrifice and then change into other garments when taking the ashes outside of the camp. This sacrifice was to burn all night, and the fire was to be continual and never go out. Letter B, the Lord further explains the meat or meal offerings. Aaron's sons were to offer the unleavened flour with oil and frankincense on the altar, 
and any leftovers were to be eaten by all the men of the household of Aaron, except in the case of a meat offering given directly by the priests themselves. Then it was to be cooked completely. In letter C, the Lord further explains the sin offering. The priest would eat the offering that was brought to the Lord for the sin offering, and everything that the sacrifice touched would be considered holy. Any clothing sprinkled with the blood of the offering was to be washed in the holy place. And then any clay pots that had blood on them were to be broken and metal pots were to be cleaned. Then letter D, the Lord further explains the trespass offering. For this offering, the blood was to be sprinkled around the altar and all the inwards, including the rump, were to be burnt. The same guidelines for the sin offering all applied to the trespass offering concerning each priest being able to eat the offering they laid on the altar, and no priest's direct offering for their own sin was to be eaten at all. And finally, letter E, the Lord further explains the peace offering. There were three different types of peace offerings. The first was known as the thanksgiving offering. If it was a thanksgiving offering, then in addition to an animal sacrifice, it was also to be made with unleavened cakes mingled with oil, fine flour, and fried as well as with unleavened bread. The second was known as the heave offering. If it was a heave offering, which meant one just given or heaved to the Lord for no reason, then the one who offered the sacrifice was to eat the flesh the same day and not leave anything until the morning. And the third and final peace offering was known as the vow offering. If it was a vow offering presented to the Lord after a promise was made, then the one who offered it could eat it that day and the next, but on the third day it was to be burnt up. If anyone ate of the offering while they were considered unclean, then they would be cut off or excommunicated from the people. Now, with this offering, no fat and no blood was to be eaten. Eating blood was punishable by excommunication, and no animal was to be eaten that died naturally. In addition to all of these guidelines, the breast and shoulder of the sacrifices were given to the sons of Aaron. Roman numeral 3. Moses consecrates Aaron and his sons. Letter A. He washes Aaron with water. The Lord told Moses to bring Aaron and his sons in front of all the people, and there he washed Aaron with water. Then he put his priestly garments upon him and anointed him with oil. Letter B. They make several sacrifices. After Aaron and his sons were baptized, Moses, Aaron, and Aaron's sons offered a young bull as a sin offering, but they burned it outside the camp. Then a ram was brought to be sacrificed, and its blood was sprinkled upon the altar and all around it. This sacrifice was burnt on the altar. Then another ram, called the Ram of Consecration, was brought and killed. The blood from this ram was put on Aaron's right ear, right thumb, and right big toe, as was also done to Aaron's sons. Now, the Jewish people teach that this was because of the symbolism of listening to God with your ear, worshiping God with your hands, and walking after God with your feet. Then, finally, blood was sprinkled on all of their garments. And let her see. Aaron and his sons stay in the tabernacle for seven days. They were told to stay in the tabernacle for this long, or they would die. In Roman numeral four, Aaron and his sons offer sacrifices for the people. Letter A. They present a sin offering and a burnt offering. Moses told Aaron to offer a young calf and a kid of the goats for a sin offering, and then a ram and a young bull for a burnt offering. They obeyed Moses and followed the instructions and laws for offering these sacrifices. And then letter B. 
the Lord himself consumes the sacrifices on the altar. Interestingly, the Lord sent a fire to consume the altar for the offerings. The first collective sacrifice was actually burnt by God himself. Roman numeral 5. A fire consumes Nadab and Abihu. Letter A. They offer a strange fire on the altar of incense. Nadab and Abihu offered something on the altar of incense that was not allowed, so the Lord sent a fire to devour them. Now, it could be that they were burning the incense with fire of their own making rather than taking fire from off the altar. Much like with Ananias and Sapphira, God will usually do something drastic to offenders at the beginning of a dispensation or age to set an example to obey his parameters. Then letter B, they were not allowed to be mourned. After Nadab and Abihu died, Moses made their cousins carry the dead bodies out of the tabernacle. Then Aaron and his other sons were told not to mourn for their loss at all, or they would die as well. Then letter C. Eleazar and Ithamar anger Moses. Sometime after Nadab and Abihu's death, Moses told Eleazar and Ithamar, Aaron's other sons, to offer sacrifice for the people. But Moses got mad at them because the goat of the sin offering was burnt so badly by Nadab and Abihu that they could not even eat it. Thankfully, Aaron talked to Moses and his anger was pacified. Roman numeral 6. The Lord defines clean and unclean animals. Letter A. Let's first begin by discussing the clean land animals. These animals had to be those that had split hooves and those that chewed the cud. These are examples of cows, deer, goats, lambs, and others. Now let's look at letter B, the unclean land animals. Some of these animals are camels, conies, rabbits, and pigs, because while they do chew the cud, they are not split-hooved animals. In letter C, the clean water animals are listed. In order for an animal to be considered clean out of the water, it must have both fins and scales. Letter D. The unclean birds are listed. Some of these birds that were considered unclean were the eagle, the osprey, vulture, hawk, raven, owl, swan, pelican, stork, and even the bat. Then letter E. The clean flying insects are listed. These clean flying insects that they could eat were the locust, the beetle, and the grasshopper. And finally, letter F. Other unclean animals are listed. Other animals that they could not eat were the weasel, the mouse, tortoise, ferrets, chameleons, lizards, snails, and even moles. In this section, we find out that even touching these unclean animals was considered an abomination. Now let's look at Roman numeral 7. The Lord gives laws concerning medical practice and conditions. Letter A. The Lord gives laws for purification after childbirth. Number 1. After the birth of a baby boy, the mom was considered unclean for seven days. Then on the eighth day, she was to bring the son to be circumcised. Then she would spend 33 more days for purifying and was not allowed in any holy place, making this a total of 40 days of purification. Secondly, after the birth of a baby girl, the mom was unclean for two weeks or 14 days, and then she spent another 66 days purifying herself. This would give us a total of 80 days. Now, this is double that of the boy, 
possibly because of both her bleeding and the vaginal bleeding of the baby girl during the birth process. Now, at the end of her purification period for either a boy or a girl, she was to bring an offering to the Lord of a one-year-old lamb and a young turtle dove or pigeon. However, if she was poor, then she could bring two turtle doves or two pigeons. Then let her be. The Lord gives laws for diagnosing and treating leprosy and boils. If the sore that an individual had had a white hair and was deeper than surface level, then he or she was considered unclean and would have to announce everywhere they went that they were unclean. However, if it was not more than skin deep and the hair did not turn white, then he or she was to be isolated for seven days, and on the seventh day, if it had not spread and darkened in color, then they would be considered clean. Letter C. The Lord gives laws for cleansing a leper. Number one, one bird was to be killed and another was to be set free. If the leprosy of an individual was healed, then he was to bring two live birds, kill one of them, and then the priest would use the live bird to dip in the blood of the dead bird, and then the blood would be sprinkled on the healed leper. After this, the bird could then be set free. Then secondly, the leper was to be washed and shaved. The leper was to wash his clothes, shave off all his hair, bathe himself, and then repeat this same process seven days later. And thirdly, multiple sacrifices were to be offered eight days later. On the eighth day, the healed leper was to offer two male lambs and one female lamb of the first year with both fine flour and oil for a trespass offering, a wave offering, and a sin offering. Blood was then applied to the leper's right ear, right thumb, and right big toe. Interestingly, when they get into the land of Canaan, the priest would even have authority to condemn an entire house for a certain number of days if leprosy had spread in it. Therefore, he acted just as much like a physician as he did a priest. And letter D. The Lord gives laws for diagnosing and treating sores. If there were any spots on the body where fluid was coming out, then the person would be unclean for seven days. Then, on the eighth day, he would take two turtle doves or two pigeons. One was to be given as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. This also included women who were menstruating. Roman numeral 7. The Day of Atonement is instituted. Letter A. Multiple sacrifices were offered and a scapegoat was set free. After Aaron's two sons died, the Lord told him to bring sacrifice for the people of a young bull for a sin offering, a ram for a burnt offering, and two goats, one to be offered for a sin offering and the other to be a scapegoat to be set free. For the scapegoat, Aaron was to lay both hands upon his head, confess all the sins of the people, and then send him away by the hands of a fit man into the wilderness. Letter B. This ritual was to be performed on the same day of each year, considered a special Sabbath. According to Leviticus 23, we find out that this will be on the tenth day of of the seventh month of the Jewish calendar. Roman numeral 9, the importance of sacrificial obedience and blood. Letter A, no sacrifices could be made outside of the tabernacle. This chapter begins by declaring that all sacrifices were to be made in the tabernacle, and if anyone sacrificed outside of the tabernacle, then they were supposed to be excommunicated from the people. And secondly, no one could drink or eat blood. 
It is then declared that if anyone drank or ate blood, then the Lord would kill him because he says that the life is in the blood and it is what makes atonement for sin. Roman numeral 10. Leviticus 18 gives us laws concerning sexual sins. Some of these sexual sins are do not look at the nakedness of your kin. This included your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, your step-parents, your step-siblings, and even your in-laws. Also, do not look at the nakedness of your neighbor's spouse. In addition to these, do not have sex with the same gender and do not have sex with an animal. All of these sins are considered abominations to the Lord, punishable by excommunication. However, we will find out later that the last two, having sex with the same gender or having sex with an animal, was also punishable by death. Roman numeral 11. In Leviticus 19, God charges his people to be holy. For them to do this, they had to follow his commandments. While many of them listed in this chapter we have already discussed, here are some new ones to us. First, while reaping your harvest, the corners of the fields were to be left for the poor and the immigrants to pick for themselves. Secondly, they were to pay their servants on the same day. Thirdly, do not mistreat the deaf or blind. Fourth, do not show partiality to anyone, no matter their physical or financial abilities. Fifthly, love your neighbors as yourself and do not be vengeful against them. The next one would be breed livestock with their kind and don't mix seeds when farming. Another rule was do not mix garment types when sewing clothing. And, do not make any markings on your body for the dead or tattoos. And finally, do not prostitute your daughter. Roman numeral 12. Leviticus 20 lists the punishment for sexual sins. An actual physical act of sex, whether it be adultery, homosexuality, bestiality, or the like, was punishable by death. However, just looking at a person's nakedness who was not your own was punishable by excommunication. Roman numeral 13. Rules concerning the priests are given. First, they were not allowed to touch a dead body unless it was their near kin. Secondly, they were not allowed to shave their heads or the corner of their beard, nor cut their flesh. Thirdly, they were not allowed to marry a prostitute or a divorced woman. Fourth, if a priest's daughter became a prostitute, she was to be killed by fire. Fifth, the high priest must always have his head covered and was required to marry a virgin. And finally, a priest that had a blemish, whether it was him being blind, lame, having a flat nose, a broken foot, a crooked back, or dwarfism was not allowed to offer any type of sacrifice. Roman numeral 14. The Lord establishes his feasts. In Leviticus 23, the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Wave Sheaf Feast, the Feast of the First Fruits, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles are established. Roman numeral 15. In Leviticus 24, we find out that a blasphemous son is put to death. His mother was an Israelite, but his father was an Egyptian. And in the process of a fight with another man, he blasphemed the Lord's name and cursed. So they brought him to Moses, and the Lord told him to take the man outside of the camp and have him stoned to death by the people. Roman numeral 16. The year of Jubilee and the laws pertaining to it are given in Leviticus 25. Letter A. Fields were to remain unsown every seventh year. The fields were to be sown for six years, but 
On the seventh, they were to be left alone as a Sabbath of rest. In fact, nothing that grew in the field during that year was even to be eaten. Letter B. All loans and bond servants were to be forgiven every 49 years. Every seven occurrences of the seven years was to be considered the year of Jubilee, and all possessions and bond servants were to be freed. Interestingly, each year they got closer to the year of Jubilee, the value of items was to increase but then immediately decrease afterward. Roman numeral 17. Promises of blessings for keeping the law and cursings for breaking the law are given in Leviticus 26. Let's begin by looking at the promises of blessings. Promises of blessing included rain for crops, abundance of crops, peace in the land from both animals and humans, victory over their enemies where they would see five men defeating a hundred and a hundred defeating a thousand, and God's manifested presence. However, the promises of cursings included terror, sickness, fever, crop failure, defeat in battle, and wicked rulers. And if the cursings did not wake the people up, then they would receive them sevenfold. Interestingly, the Lord spent far greater time discussing the cursings that they would receive for disobedience than he even did the blessings for obedience. Roman numeral 18. The laws concerning the payment of vows and redemption of people and property is given in Leviticus 27. Letter A. If a vow could not be kept, then a payment must be given. A person was expected to keep whatever vow he or she made, but if they could not and it was made to the Lord, then a payment must be given and Depending upon the person's age and gender, that payment could go up or down. Letter B. A person could be redeemed from his vow to the Lord through payment. If a person wanted to redeem an individual indebted to the Lord, then they could just pay that price that they were worth, which is outlined in this chapter. And finally, letter C. Property or livestock could be redeemed from a vow by a payment plus 20%. If a person wanted to redeem property or livestock that was given as a vow to the Lord, then the payment was 20% more than previously mentioned. That brings us to the end of our study of the book of Leviticus and lecture 8 for the Pentateuch.